In tonight's class, I would like to talk about the status bar, which is something we didn't cover in uh, the last class. We discussed the menu system, toolbars, and how toolbars can be um, opened, closed, and moved about your drawing area uh, to suit you. Uh, you'll notice that uh, I don't have any more toolbars open than I need. If you have a very large monitor and uh, you can you can have more toolbars open comfortably and not encroach on your drawing area. But for the purposes of uh, this presentation I've, I've uh, kept them to a minimum. So we want to talk about the status bar which is something we did not discuss and you'll find it depending on which version of AutoCAD that you're using you will find it at the bottom on the right or to the left but it is always near the bottom of the screen and you'll notice that uh, many of the the words here are grayed out meaning they're not active there is a whole host of functionality here that is going to be essential to um, to your drawing productively and I'm just going to introduce snap and grid uh, I do not use them I find them to be cumbersome uh, this again is a personal preference and you'll have to decide for yourself so I'll introduce it to you and you decide whether it's useful to you or not snap has to do with as you generate geometry uh, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself here I just wanted to I, I wanted to give you an introduction and say we're going to talk about the status bar we're going to revisit lines again polylines which are a, are a version of lines and the fact that it says poly which means multiple or many uh, kind of gives away what it is uh, in circles and that will be the extent of the geometry that we're going to draw tonight that I'll show you how to use and for the most part is about all you're going to need to um, to produce most of your septic system designs and, and I would say even surveys okay now let's get back to the status bar you'll notice that there's an area where you're going to see a prompt it says that it's ready if we were to introduce a command here uh, like line we're going to get a prompt here as well um, I'd have to say that for the most part I don't pay a whole lot of attention to what's going on here on the status bar you're also going to notice that there is uh, a coordinate display I happen to have it turned off you can turn it on I do not again find it particularly useful you may um, so I don't pay a whole lot of attention to what's going on here but all this is uh, is a visual display of where the cursor is relative to zero zero meaning the lower left corner of your uh, your model space so you can see we're quite a bit away we're quite a quite a distance away in units from zero zero you see the numbers four thousand seven hundred and eighteen uh, big numbers I pay very little attention to them now let's get to where I do live and that is the snap um, and to activate a command there are a number of ways to do it and I'm not going to share all of them with you tonight just suffice it to say that if you hover your mouse over the word and right button you will see a dialog appear and that dialog will allow you to turn that particular feature on or off as well as 
select settings which will be important to you. Another dialog box will appear and again depending on which version of uh, Carlson you're using and whether you're running it on IntelliCAD or AutoCAD the dialogs will look a little different but um, the information will be somewhere in that uh, in that dialog and you it's asking for a snap spacing meaning how many units uh, relative to your drawing do you want there to be this imaginary grid of, of places where your cursor is going to jump to automatically and let me illustrate that I just turned it on so that's another way to turn it on uh, I gave it a setting 10 units will say OK and it is on now and if I were to invoke a command like line now notice what the cursor is doing it's jumping it's not allowing me to transition smoothly from one place to another it is jumping by those predefined coordinates that I gave it 10 by 10 units so if I were to draw that line there and then down you see what it allows you to do it allows you to snap snap your cursor by whatever uh, amount you have set your uh, your snap coordinates to in our case it was 10 by 10 and let's let's uh, see if indeed we did you'll notice that's 10 units in our case 10 feet as is that one that's what snap is about if you're gonna draw a building or some geometry that is some specific um, multiple of a whole unit it I think it has to be a whole unit let's take a look yes they have to be whole units then snaps are an awesome way to go let's show you again and this time I set the unit to five and you can see it is five units in width so the snap feature forces the cursor to specific locations as defined by that snap setting so everything is going to be in an increment of whatever that snap interval is that you just set it can be useful I prefer not to use it um, if for no other reason then you have to change the snap interval a lot to make it useful but that's snap we're gonna turn that off now we're going to take a look at grid and again your dialog may look a little different we're gonna turn it on we're gonna say show the grid and I want the grid to be at a spacing of 10 by 10 well what does the grid look like there's the grid now this is probably familiar to you you've uh, a, a lot of folks feel very comfortable with having this grid in the background of your drawing it can be particularly useful if you happen to be using your snaps at the same time for example we we have the grid set at 10 and the snap interval is set at 5 so here we go let's draw some lines again notice it snaps in five unit increments so it's gonna in fact just for argument's sake let's make them both the same there you go now notice that cursor wants to snap to a dot on the grid the grid 
is an imaginary. Uh, it, it isn't really part of your drawing. It's just a visual aid and it's convenient if your grid is set to some multiple of your snap. In our case I've set them both to the same number. So if we wanted to draw a house um, let's say 40 units long, 40 feet long, so there's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. We stop and we want to make it 20 feet wide. There's 5, 10, 15, 20. And now we can easily close it. So there's the snap and the grid. Again, from my perspective, my personal experience, it has limited value. I prefer not to use either. So I will turn them off. There. That's the way I prefer to see my screen. You'll also notice in the drawing area um, the icon, the X, Y, and Z icon. Again, it's just an aid to you. It doesn't appear in your actual printed drawing. And uh, in, it, IntelliCAD puts this icon to the right. Uh, AutoCAD puts it over here to the left. Uh, it's, it serves the same purpose. So don't be bothered by the icon. You can turn it off and I usually do but I wanted you to see it there uh, so that when you see it in your drawings you won't be too bothered by it it's just a reference for you that Y is in the up direction towards the top of your screen X is to the right and the left and Z you'll notice is right at the intersection of the X and Y coordinates and that means it is coming out towards you. So when we draw topography, the elevations will be coming out of the screen toward us or moving into the screen away from us. You won't see it unless we were to rotate the drawing, um, but it will have depth to it. So this is truly three-dimensional drawing.